Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to root the HyperOS ROM using Magisk. So as you could see currently, I'm using the latest HyperOS based on Android 14 and it's on the POCO F5, but the steps are applicable across all the POCO, Redmi and Xiaomi phones which are running any version of HyperOS. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First of all, you will have to get hold of Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive and these are the files of platform tools as you could see. Once you have done the extraction, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required for ADB commands, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to the settings menu on your phone, then go to about phone, then go to info and specs, and now tap on OS version seven times you will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Once you get this prompt, go back, again go back, then go to additional settings and you should now see developer option. So go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will now get a prompt on your phone, check mark I'm aware of all the risk and wait for 10 seconds. Once that time frame has elapsed, just tap on OK and with this debugging is now enabled. You might get an RC key prompt as well in that case, tap on OK and with this debugging is enabled, let's verify the same. So go to platform to folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB tweaks and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, you could refer to my guide and the video and get this job done using the official me unlock tool. Moving on, once you've unlocked the bootloader, you will now have to get hold of the HyperOS ROM for your phone. You may download it from a third party site such as Xiaomi firmware updater. Once you've got hold of the ROM, now comes the most important part. So if you're f the general rule is that if your phone came with Android 12 or older version, you will have to use the boot IMG file for rooting. On the other hand, if your phone came with Android 13 or higher version, then you will have to use the init boot file for rooting. But there are a few exceptions. For instance, the POCO F5. The POCO F5 came with Android 13, but still we will have to use the boot IMG file. So in case of exceptions, you just have to extract the ROM file and if you see a boot IMG and there is no init boot IMG file, then obviously you will have to use the boot IMG file. But if your phone came with Android 13 and higher version and it has both the boot and the init boot, then you will have to use the init boot file. On the other hand, if your phone came with Android 12 or older version, then it will not have init boot file, it will only have the boot file and you will have to use the boot IMG. So again, I am repeating, the general rule is that you will have to, if your phone came with Android 12 or older version, you will have to use the boot IMG. If it came with Android 13 or higher version, use the init boot IMG file. But in some cases such as the POCO F5, even though the phone came with Android 13, there will be no init boot and there will only be the boot file. So in that case, you will obviously have to use the boot IMG. On the other hand, if your phone only have the boot IMG file, then just use the boot IMG, but it has both the boot and init boot. Then in that case, you will have to use the init boot IMG file. So with that in mind, let's get started. First and foremost, you will have to extract the fastboot ROM. So by default, it will be in a .tgz format. Let me show you. This is the fastboot ROM, which I have downloaded. So just right click on it and select extract all. It will extract the firmware and you will get this folder. Inside this folder, you will get an images folder. So th this is the image folder for POCO F5, which came with Android 13. But still, since there is no init boot file and there is only the boot file, so it falls under the exception category and we'll have to use the boot IMG file for rooting. So as you could see, this is the boot IMG file. This is the boot IMG file. Once you have got the boot IMG file, you will now have to transfer the boot IMG file onto your phone. So let me do that as well. If your phone is not visible on your PC, then select file transfer and your phone should not be visible here. Let's transfer it over here. So it's the stock boot IMG. So one thing to keep in mind is the fact that you will have to download the same firmware, which is 
currently installed onto your phone. You could verify the same from the build number. So go here, go to about phone and check out the OS version and make sure to download the same firmware which is currently installed onto your phone. The Android version and the OS version should be the exact same. So in other words, the boot IMG file is the exact same boot IMG file which is currently installed onto our phone. So once you have got the boot IMG for the exact same firmware, let's now move ahead with the next step. So now you will have to get hold of the magisk file. So go to my guide and from here, you will download the magisk APK. At the time of recording, the magisk APK version 27 is the latest one. So you may download the APK file from here. This is the official download link. Get hold of the APK file from here and it's the change log if you want to view. So once you have got the magisk APK file, you will now have to transfer the APK file onto your phone as well. So this is the magisk APK file and this is the root checker app. Let's download that as well. If you want, you may install the app from Play Store. The root checker app, it will only be used to show you that our phone is rooted or not. So as of now, we have got the magisk app and if you want, you may install the root checker app from Play Store. So at the time of recording, as of now, you should be having both the magisk APK and the stock boot IMG file onto your phone. Once you have both these files, let's now move ahead and patch the file via magisk and then you will flash it via fastboot command. So first and foremost, let me show you that my phone is not rooted. It's not rooted. Let me show you that. So let me open a file manager app and first and foremost, I will let me access the file first off. Let me show you the root checker app. You may solve the app from Play Store and let's wait for around 10 seconds and then I'll show you that my phone is not rooted. So let's just wait for a couple of more seconds and let me now install the app. It's now installed. Let's launch it and let's get started. Tap on verify root. As you could see, my phone is currently not rooted. So let's now proceed ahead and root the phone. For that, first and foremost, you will have to install the Magisk APK file. So let's install it. Once that is done, open the Magisk app. Then tap on install next to Magisk. Then select and patch a file. Now choose either the boot IMG or the init boot IMG file depending on your phone. In my case, it's the boot IMG. So choose the file, then tap on let's go. Magisk will now patch the file and place it in the downloads folder. So as you could see over here, the file has been placed in the downloads folder. Let me access it from my phone, from my PC. So this is the downloads folder of my phone and this is the Magisk patch file. Copy it and transfer the file to the platform tool folder. Let's transfer it here and it will take a few seconds. Once that is done, let's now rename the file to something shorter. So for the ease of convenience, let's rename it to MP and the complete name becomes MP.IMG. So depending on the file, it will be either the boot IMG for some of you, for the others, it will be init boot.IMG file. In my case, it's the boot IMG that does not matter. Let's just rename it to MP.IMG. And let's move ahead with the next step. So now you will have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. For that, open CMD window and type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. And it will take a few seconds and then your phone should, should now reboot into the fast boot mode. So let's wait for that to happen. And now let's verify the fast boot connection. So type in fast boot devices and hit enter. And make sure that you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you'll have to install fast boot drivers. I have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to my guide and get this job done. Once you have installed the drivers, right click on the windows icon and select device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and make sure your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fast boot signify that the PC is able to read the phone in fast boot mode. And we are now good to go ahead. So now we will have to flash the patch boot IMG file onto our phone. Regarding this, there are two approaches. The method for the boot file is different and those you have to refer to step 8a. On the other hand, if you are using the init boot file, those users have to refer to step B, 8b. As of now, let's deal with the step 8a and it's only for those users who are using the boot IMG file. I'm again repeating, this section is only for those who you are, who's are using the boot IMG file for booting. If you are using the init boot IMG file, then you may skip this section and move ahead with the next section. So with that said, if your phone is currently using the boot IMG file and you have placed the boot patch boot IMG file in the platform tool folder. So now what you have to do is simply first and foremost, you will have to boot your phone using the patch boot IMG file. So for that type in the command fast boot, boot and the name of the file, which is mp.img and hit enter. 
your phone will not boot using this patch boot img file but this will be just a temporary boot root for a one time usage we are doing this just to verify that everything is working or not if everything is working well and good we could then move ahead and make the root permanent but if everything is not working well and good then we will rectify the issue do note that you will you may also directly flash the file and obtain the permanent root at one go but that's not a recommended approach instead you should always use the boot command first and verify if everything is working or not since everything is working well well and good in our case it has booted to os it means that the patch file is working and now we may obtain permanent root for that launch the magisk app and then tap on install you may or you might get a prompt on your phone as of now tap on cancel rather tap on install next to magisk then select direct install and tap on let's go magisk will now flash the patch boot img file onto your phone and once that is done you will get a reboot option so let's just wait for that to happen it's now flashing the new boot img file and will take only a few seconds once that is done tap on reboot and your phone will now reboot to the os and this time around we have obtained root permanently so as i was saying apart from using the fastboot boot command you may directly use the fastboot flash boot command this will flash the patch file onto your phone and your phone will directly boot to the os and obtain root but this is not the recommended approach because if something is wrong with the patch file then your phone might go into a boot loop or a soft break state to avoid that from happening always use the fast boot boot command if something is wrong with the patch file you must do a restart and the issue will be fixed so it's always the recommended approach and after you have done a fast boot boot you must then do a direct install of magisk as we have done right now and your phone will then automatically boot to the os so upon doing a direct install let's now verify and as you could see we have now obtained root with the latest magis build let's verify the same by launching the root checker app as well so it's a root checker app let me tap on verify root and you could see we have got the prompt tap on grant and we have now obtained root so now let me discuss the method for the init boot users so for the init boot users they don't have the option to temporarily boot their phone using the patch file instead you will have to directly flash the patch init boot file there is no option to test the file first you will just have to boot your phone to fast boot mode and simply use the command fast boot flash then the partition name which is the init boot and the name of the file which in our case will be mp.img so use the command fast boot flash init boot mp.img and hit enter and your phone will then boot to the os once it boot to the os you will launch the magisk app and then you should have obtained root so the major difference between the init boot and the boot method is the fact that in case of boot you may use the boot command to verify the file and if everything is working well and good you could then obtain the root permanently on the other hand you don't have such liberty and option in case of init boot you cannot use the boot command you would directly have to use the flash command so keep this point in mind and with this you will have obtained root as you could see in our case we have obtained root and guys on that note i round up this video so if in your case you get stuck in a boot loop then you will just have to flash the stock boot or the stock init boot file depending on the file which you have patched so simply extract the boot img or the init boot img file place it inside the platform to folder on your pc and then flash it upon flashing the patch file will be replaced by the stock file and your phone will be fixed and it will then boot to the os so guys on that note i round up this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching